Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today I'm going to show you how to solo Mr. Cabbage Head's garden designed by Todd Sanders. This game began its life as a print and play, and you can still download the files from Board Game Geek, but we'll be playing the printed version that was kickstarted a little while back. The premise of Mr. Cabbage Head's Garden is that we are trying to plant an award-winning vegetable garden. We want a blue ribbon. We also want to win the heart of the lovely Eudora Brassica, who is our love interest in the game and who will be judging our garden. So we're going to be drawing and placing vegetable cards in arrangements that are going to get us the highest score possible. However, it's not just about growing our garden, it's also about preparing to deal with our tedious neighbors who are going to come in and steal from our beautiful, beautiful garden. The first part of setup is going to be setting up the vegetable deck. So here's our deck of vegetable cards. So you have peppers, carrots, salsify. So you just keep that little shuffle. Then you're going to splay out your three on holiday cards because what happens is that three times throughout the game, you go on holiday and that is when your garden is vulnerable to your tedious neighbors. So there are 45 vegetable cards so you put 15 on top of each on holiday card and then stack them all to create one big deck. So 15, 15, 15, and then stack them all up. Now that our vegetable deck is set up, let's have a look at those tedious, tedious neighbors. So we're going to be just sampling with the classic set of four. So we have Horace Savoy Brassica, Lord Carrot Body, the Mayor of Onion Town, and Sally Tamiutos. So these are... In case you're wondering about the art, which is indeed quirky, um, these images are actually taken from vintage slash, I think, Victorian era seed packets, where this was considered something that would sell seed packets. So enjoy the vintage art. Um, but these are our bad guys. And on the back of each of them, there's like a little description of what they're like, and also the rules for how they're going to take vegetables from your garden. So on each holiday, there's at least the serious threat that one of these guys is going to come and take something from your garden. And the way that you determine what neighbor might come is at the end of each round when we draft a vegetable card, we're also going to need to turn over some neighbor tokens. And the neighbor who ends up with the most tokens at the end when we go on holiday is going to be the one who comes and robs us. Um, the other thing is that if you can get all the neighbors tied for the number of tokens, it's partially luck and partially paying attention to you know the number of tokens you need to turn over to see if you can get lucky. Um, if they are all tied, they end up in a tedious conversation with each other and they don't come into your garden at all. So there's definitely some strategic um, choice in the game. Even though you can't control which neighbor tokens get turned over, you can kind of attempt to game the system and see if you can get them to tie. The other thing we're going to need to set up before we play is the beehive. So we have a beehive. There are three bees on it and three bees in your supply at the beginning of the game. And what will happen is that each round when we're planting vegetables, we're going to draft three cards. If I want to take the card that is furthest to the left and furthest from the beehive, I have to pay a bee to take it. If I want to take the card on the right, I receive a bee when I take it, and then the card in the middle does nothing. So if I run out of bees on either side, it affects my buying power for that round and different stuff like that. So there's like a little miniature economy happening while you draft that makes the game a little bit more uh, meaty in terms of decision making. So we're going to have our planting phases, and then we will have a neighbor phase, and then we do that for three rounds for each of the three times that we go on holiday. So to play the first round, what we're going to do is we're going to just draw three vegetable cards, and decide which one we'd like to plant. So let's take a quick look at the vegetables that we drew. We drew two lettuce vegetables and a salsify, and we have some numbers on the bottom of the card that are going to determine some stuff in the game. So this red number, five, five, and three, this is the total number of vegetables of that type in the deck. So we know that there are five lettuce cards, so there's three more still in there somewhere, but there's only two more salsify still in the deck. So that's the basically the rarity of the vegetables. This blue number up top in the ribbon, that's the point value. So we also know that salsify is more rare than lettuce, so it is also worth more points. We have a vegetable number, so basically it'll determine which card is going to um, is going to decide how many neighbor tokens we draw for the round, and then this is the number of neighbor tokens that we will draw. So basically, whatever two cards are left, the one with the higher number is going to determine how many um, how many neighbor tokens we draw. So if this is left, we'll draw one. Um, if this one were left, the 74 would win, and we would draw two. 
So there's a little bit of strategy, not only in trying to score off of your vegetables because of the point values, but also trying to determine how many more neighbor tokens you want to let out onto the board. The other thing you need to think about when you are choosing what to plant is that vegetables that are not adjacent to another vegetable of the same type are not going to score this number. So in order to get seven points from the salsify, I have to put it next to, so I have to put to the right or left or above or below it, another salsify card. The same for the lettuce. So if there's no adjacent card, you don't actually score off of that vegetable. So you also need to be tracking the rarity of those vegetables for the purposes of being sure that you're going to be able to plant something next to what you have. There are also some awards of merit. So when you plant your vegetable garden, we're basically going to have three rows and we can go six across on each row. So getting your vegetables into certain configurations is another way to score if you're not putting them next to each other. So if you can get the four corners, that's 12 points. If you can get the avenue, so the first column and the sixth column are occupied by two different sets of three, then that can score you some points. Um, the promenade is getting pairs of vegetables and then two more in the middle. You can flip that design. You can get a monopoly where you have at least five vegetables of one type and that's worth some points. Especially if you're also placing vegetables next to each other, you're going to score for those as well, which is pretty cool. You can get the bees knees. So if all six bees are in your supply at the end of the game, so you've put them all back in your supply, then you get points. Um, and then the mixed plot, which is each row has exactly three types of vegetables in it, is worth a significant number of points, but you're also playing pretty risky because you can get vegetables stolen by your neighbors, and also um, it may affect your scoring of other vegetable cards that you draw. And then you get the bounty, which is 12 points. There's six vegetables of different types in a single row, and you can only score it once. So if you're getting a whole bunch of variety of cards, you can decide, oh, maybe I'll go for the bounty. So Putting vegetables next to each other scores, getting vegetables in these awards of merit configurations will score. So you have to decide where you want to plant things and what you want to go for. So for our first vegetable planting, it doesn't really matter what we pick yet because we're not we're not getting enough out of the deck to make a lot of decisions. Also, um, exactly where you put it on your grid is a little bit negotiable because we don't exactly have you know a board. But let's go ahead and take this salsify. And let's say that this is the rightmost corner and we put the salsify here on the bottom. That's what we'll do. So we can go three up and one, two, three, four, five this way. So the grid starts to kind of build up. So since we took the salsify, we're going to get a B token from the hive. So these poor abandoned lettuce cards are now going to be determining, determining how many neighbor tokens we overturn. So the highest number is this lettuce, which is 87 we draw one neighbor token. So let's see who might be threatening to come our way. Uh-oh, okay, so Lord Carrot Body has been kind of eyeing our garden. He's walking by, looking through his little monocle, thinking about stealing my food. And, you know, we'll go through all of the rounds before whoever has the most tokens ends up coming over. Now these cards are discarded from the game. You can look at your discard pile, but it never comes back into action. The other thing that you should know is that once you've planted a vegetable, you cannot move it. You can compost it, but you have to put it under Eudora Brassica up here when you do that, and it's negative two victory points for each composted card at the end of the game. All right, so let's pull three more. All right, so we got two rutabagas and a carrot. So let's see. There's a ton of carrots in here, which is maybe a good thing. Um, and then we also have a couple of rutabagas, and I don't... We'll have to think about what we want. So since there's so many carrots in the game, I'm actually pull this carrot. I'm going to put it over here and maybe try for a promenade later. But let's say that this is the bottom left corner. So, all right, so we've put the carrot here. And just on our grid, let's say this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're just kind of keeping track of what our grid is going to look like. Um, if we can get another salsify here, we may be able to kind of go for a promenade in our structure, which would be pretty cool. So now we have these rutabagas left. Also, we took the carrot from the middle. That means that we neither pay nor receive bees. It's just nothing happened with that. All right, so now we're going to decide what neighbor is going to come over. This has the higher number, so it's going to be two neighbor tokens. It would have been the same either way, but just good practice. So let's do, oh, Lord Carrot Body came by again. And then Horace Savoy Brassica also gave us a little peek. Now these cards go in the discard, and we're going to draw another three. One, 
two, three. All right, so at this point, I think we've pretty much given up on rutabagas, so I'm not gonna go for this one. There's not very many pumpkins in the deck and there are a lot of carrots. So I'm thinking about grabbing the pumpkin and trying to make sure that I don't lose the chance at getting some because I know that there's going to be some more carrots along the way. So let's go ahead and take another bee. I can only take one more from the right before taking some from the left and giving bees back. So I need to think about that. We're gonna take the pumpkin and let's put it in the top like we're going for a promenade. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, and this will be top row. We'll move things around as the garden expands. Okay, so 36 is the higher number. We're gonna overturn one neighbor token. And it's Lord Carrot Body again. I think Lord Carrot Body might be coming over, yikes. So we are going to discard this and we'll draw three more cards. Beans, Salsify, Carrot. Ooh. So since Lord Carrot Body is the, currently the most likely to visit us, why don't we have a look at what he does? Because you can look at what the neighbors may do in order to plan what you want to put on your garden right now. So Lord Carrot Body will take the vegetable with the highest vegetable number that is adjacent to a carrot. If there are no carrots in the garden or no carrots are adjacent to any other vegetable, he will take the vegetable with the highest vegetable number. So we need to think about that as we decide to plant more things in our garden because he's going to take something, he's going to take the thing with the highest vegetable number from the garden. So what would that be? So the good news for us is that actually the vegetable with the highest number is this carrot down here, which is maybe the most disposable in terms of us having a chance of getting more. I'm going to go ahead and take this salsify and I'm going to put it right here at the edge of my garden because we're gonna go for that promenade. And also I know that Lord Carrot Body is not gonna to try to take it. So no bees are put in the hive, nor are they taken from it because I took the card from the middle. Also, if I can keep these Salsify to the end, they are going to score me a brilliant 14 points. So now the highest vegetable number is the beans. So we're gonna draw two, two of these neighbor tokens. So Horace Savoy Brasca has given this a run. Ooh, and now they're tied. Interesting. So now we'll discard these cards. Tied neighbors is actually great news for me because if neighbors are tied for the most tokens, they get caught talking to each other and they don't bother me. So let's draw three more lovely vegetables. And as you can see, this is our last planting round before we go on holiday for the first time. All right, so the question is what vegetable to choose? And this is a little bit agonizing actually because I would really, really, really like to have more bees back in the hive, but I also really want this turnip. And the reason that I want the turnip is because there's only three of them and this is one of my few chances to grab one throughout the game. There's six peppers, there's still a lot of carrots out there and they're not the most valuable vegetable, so if I lose out on carrots, it's not the biggest deal, but I'd really, really, really like a turnip. So, the other problem, however, is if I grab this turnip and somehow Lord Carrot Body ends up being the neighbor who comes, I'm gonna get this turnip and then he's just gonna come take it, which would be really irritating because it's like the highest number of vegetable. We are gonna risk it though. I'm gonna go ahead and give myself the last bee so I can't take anything on the left for until I get more bees back in the hive. And we're gonna take this turnip. Now, where are we gonna put it? Let's just go ahead, okay. So I have three spaces here, but I'd like to put another carrot here. I'll still have some adjacent salsify scoring possibilities. Mm, let's go ahead and just put it right here in the middle. This is a good spot for a turnip. So now we're gonna look at these cards and decide what neighbor tokens will be drawn. So 76 is bigger than 47. It would have been two either way, but it'll be two neighbors. So we're gonna pull some tokens. Okay, so the mayor of Onion Town and Sally Tamiotos. So, What's gonna happen, and this is great for me, is that according to the rules, if two or more neighbors are tied for the most tokens, they are too busy being boring conversationalists with each other to interfere with the garden. So you do not go back down to second place, although these guys are tied anyway, which is kind of interesting. It's only the most tokens, and if those are that's a tie, then nobody comes and messes with your garden. So I managed to go on holiday and get away with it, which is really, really, really great.
So now what we're gonna do is we are gonna take all these neighbor tokens back off and start again. So we'll shuffle them up real good. And then, you know, since this round was so quick and because nobody messed with the garden, I think we should play another. The thing about this game is it'll, it'll suck you in because it's only three rounds and it goes so fast. All right, so let's draw three new cards. Pepper, beans, ooh, pumpkin. So I think the obvious thing to do here is we're definitely gonna take this pumpkin because I want to work on the promenades. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll put the pumpkin here. So these pumpkins are now next to each other. If we can get another carrot here, that'll be a nice little scoring thing for us at the end of the game. The other good thing about taking that pumpkin is we're going to put a bee back in the hive. So I could take the pepper next time if that was what I wanted to do. So that's great. Um, let's see, two is bigger than one. There's going to be two neighbors. The mayor of Onion Town is coming by looking over my fence oh so nosily and then horse save away brassica so these will go in the discard and then we'll draw three more so rutabaga rutabaga lettuce i'm not super into any of these right now i think i'm just going to go ahead and take the lettuce i'll put it here and the reason i'm going to do that is so i can put another bee into the hive and kind of get my little bee economy worked out again. And then 85 is the bigger number. There will be two neighbor tokens. So Sally Tomiotos is coming. And then another horse save away Brassica. Uh-oh. So these will get discarded. And we'll draw three more. Pepper. Pepper. Turnip. Ooh. Okay. So as you guys know, I had been working on turnips. I would definitely like the turnip. Um, let's do it. We're gonna get this turnip. We're gonna pay a B, so now we're even on Bs again. I'm gonna put this turnip right here. This is supposed to be the middle row. We'll like do a little bit of readjustment in a second. Um, so then, let's see, uh, 44, there'll be one neighbor token that gets drawn, and it is Sally. So let's discard these and rearrange our stuff a little bit. All right, so I've cleaned up my garden a little bit so you can see the, um, the columns a little bit more clearly. So you have one, two is still empty, three, four, five, six. All right, so let's go ahead and flip over some more cards. One, ooh, I want that carrot. Another carrot, two, three, pumpkin. Ooh, it would be so nice to have a pumpkin. But if I take a carrot, I can finish my promenade. Uh, before we do that, let's see. Eh, there's nobody who has the highest odds of coming over. All right, let's just do what we think is the best. I'm going to go ahead and grab... Ooh. You know what? I'm just going to have to hope for another carrot because I really want this pumpkin. So now we've got bees coming over here. Okay, so I'm going to take the pumpkin and I'm going to make it the first thing that's in this. Now I'm going to put it down here next to the lettuce. Let's do that. So we got some pumpkins that are next to each other. So this would be 18 points, which is I think worth more than the promenade, which is only 14. So if I can keep these, that's what I prefer to do. Yeah. Okay, so 65 is the highest number. There's gonna be one neighbor and it's the mayor of Onion Town. Delightful. All right, so these carrots get discarded and then we're gonna draw again. Radishes, beans. peppers. And we're about to go on holiday. So whatever neighbor is sort of the dominant neighbor at the end of this round is going to come and take things from us. So right now we have a three-way tie going, but that could easily change. All right, so let's pick a vegetable. I'm going to pay from over here because I'm feeling this radish. So let's grab the radish and I want to put it, let's go ahead and put it here. Or actually, let's put it here. I think this is a great spot for a radish because there's if I get multiples, there's places to put them and they're worth a lot of points. So that seems like a good idea. Then we have these peppers and beans left. 63 is the highest number. So we're going to put three neighbor tokens out. Ugh, let's see what happens. Onion Town. Lord Carrot Body. And this is Horace Saveway Brassica, but you know what? I don't want there to be a tie. I want you guys to see what happens. So we're going to put it at the side and draw somebody else. No, nope. that's another tie. Okay, 
let's say that the mayor of Onion Town has dominated. So the tokens that we've ended up with are four mayor of Onion Towns with two, 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 and one. So the mayor of Onion Town is the one who's going to come over and steal from us. There was going to be another tie, so we had to like mess around a little bit to disadvantage me, but that's okay. I'd rather you guys see me actually use one of these guys. Okay, so the mayor of Onion Town is going to come. Let's see what he does. So according to the back of the rules, the mayor of Onion Town only loves turnips, salsify, and radishes. He will always choose to take the one turnip, salsify, or radish with the highest vegetable number. What a jerk, oh no. So this turnip right here has a 79, that's the highest number of any vegetables of that type. So he's just gonna take my turnip away and it goes into the discard. What a horrible neighbor. I'm gonna TP this dude's house next Halloween or something, good Lord. All right, so we're gonna come over here and we're gonna mix our tokens back up and we'll continue with our garden. So we only go, we only have one more set of rounds, like one more round set of vegetables turns and then uh, we'll go on holiday one last time. All right, so this pepper and beans are, should be discarded. On holiday, it'll come away. And now we're gonna draft three more cards. So we, oops, some salsify, that's exciting. Some beans and a radish. Ooh, oh, that's lots of choices because there's not very many radishes, but this is the last salsify in the whole game. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pay a B over here and I'm gonna get the salsa fee and put it right here. Cause that could be some good points. And then hopefully I can get some more turnips and build them up this way. So 82 is my biggest number. We are going to get the mayor of Onion Town again. I really don't want him to come back. All right, so these are gonna get cleared out. Our next draw, radish, carrot, beans. Ooh, I gotta watch it with the bees, but I'd really like this radish. So we're gonna grab it and we're gonna put it up here because I wanna score for it. Um, so that means that, let's see, our highest vegetable number is 80. We're gonna draw another one neighbor token. This time is Horus Saboy Brassica. So these will go to the discard. Carrot, lettuce, Pumpkin, ooh. So as much as I would like another carrot for promenade, honestly, I think I'm just going for these crazy vegetable combinations. So I'm gonna pay a B back and take this pumpkin. We're gonna put it up here. So 48, two neighbor tokens. So Sally Tamiutos and Lord Carrot Body. So now all my neighbors are on the map for this last round, exciting. So these go into discard. We'll draft another three. Lettuce, rutabaga, don't care about that, and a carrot, which I could use. <sighs> a lettuce score would be nice, but that promenade point is higher. So I'm gonna put this over here and put the carrot right here to go for the promenade. And then let's see, either way, we're gonna have one neighbor token. It's Sally this time. So these will go in discard. And I think this is our very last round. Yes, it is before we go on holiday. So, ooh, do I want the turnip? Do I want the radish? Or do I want the pepper? What's gonna score me the most? I think I gave up on this turnip when I did the pumpkin. So let's grab the radish instead. We will put it here. Oh, also we should do something about that. So I came from the middle, so no bees. Uh, and then in 89, that's one neighbor. So what neighbor will come? So if it's anything other than Sally Tommy Oasis, we'll have another tie. But you know what? I'm not gonna allow it to happen because I think that you guys should see me get punished a little bit in this game. So, okay, good, it was Sally anyway. So Sally's the one who's going to come so we can show you what she does. So Sally Tommy Oasis, what do you do? So we know that Sally is not very picky. She will always take the vegetable with the lowest vegetable number. Oh, this is a disaster for me? Not quite. Okay, it's not as bad as it could be. Okay, so the lowest vegetable number. When I took my first look, I was terrified that it was this pumpkin because if it were, this would disappear and these pumpkins that I'm scoring big off of would no longer be adjacent and that would be horrible, absolutely horrible. That would be the worst. So we do not want that at all. Um, <laughs> 
she is going to take this salsa fee because this is the lowest number that's out on the board. So the salsa fee will come up and all that will go into the discard. So this is what I ended up with. Sadly, she did take away my promenade, which really stinks. So I'm just going to have to score the vegetables that I have. Um, I did not manage to get any of the special scoring stuff. It did not work out that way. Let's, however, go ahead and score what I did get, which is lots of adjacent vegetables. So these two carrots are worth six. They were together, so it's six points. We have three radishes together for seven, seven, and seven, so that puts us at 21, plus six is 27. Um, the salsa fee is gonna get us another 14 points, so 27 and 14 will be 41. And then we have these pumpkins and we got six, 12, 18, 24 points worth of pumpkins. So 41 plus 24 is 65. So this is not a great game. We get a white ribbon. So the way that the scoring works is that <laughs> we, we didn't not score but we will get the white ribbon and some polite murmurs. So that was not the most excellent game of Mr. Cabbage Head's Garden ever played, but I think it will show you um, how a lot of the game works. Uh, and then if you get 70 to 76 to 100 points, I would have gotten a yellow ribbon and cordial applause. If I'd gotten between 101 and 125, I would have gotten the red ribbon and a hearty handshake. And 126 or more is the blue ribbon and a rousing hurrah. So this game is quite charming. Um, I like the little pastoral gardening theme. I think it is quick, it's easy to set up, easy to take down. It's just a good, quick solo game. And I think there's a lot of room in anybody's gaming collection for that. So that was Mr. Cabbage Head's Garden from Todd Sanders and happy gaming.